another day, another project. Doing the PCV system on the M272 in my E350 wagon. Um, that involves this uh, PCV unit here, the hose it connects to that leads all the way to the throttle body. Um, there's one more uh, oil separator here, as well as the oil drip pan inside of there. Changing out this hose too, and the cam plug on this head, and then the two on the other side. Uh, I've been here before, I did this probably like 30,000 miles ago or so, and I replaced the um, hose clamp on this end with just a normal worm gear hose, uh, just to make it easier for service. Yours might be the original one. I don't quite remember what that one looks like, but we'll see how we get on. As with everything I do on this car, everything is from FCP Euro. This is their PCV crankcase kit. Um, here's what it comes with. Here's the passenger side oil separator, part number for that. The driver side oil separator. Oops. The part number for that. The oil drip pan. This is what's inside the back of the um, passenger side head. Part number for that. And here's the eccentric bolt for the oil pan separator. Oil drip pan. It's an M6 by 30. The four bolts holding the oil separator to the back of the head, the two two of the camshaft plugs, and then the bigger plug. And then here's the hose at the back of the engine coming off of the passenger side head. Let me see if I can get some light on that. Part number for that. Um, and then, couldn't find the part number on this guy, but I'll link the entire kit to FCP Euro in the description. All right, quick update. Uh, we just got the oil separator and the oil drip pan out of this side, as well as the hose connecting to the throttle body. Uh, a couple important notes. I did pull this vacuum hose off, the one that leads into the firewall here. Uh, pull it off of this guy. Uh, it just has little two squeeze tabs here. Just squeeze that together and then pull it up. That gave me enough room to access the little worm gear thing I had over there. Um, if I'm gonna make any recommendation, I'm gonna recommend that you replace it that hose clamp with a worm gear or some sort of easily accessible one. Uh, if I remember correctly, the original one was kind of a pain in the ass. Um, another important note, the oil drip pan that's in here, uh, I'll show you in a minute, is reverse threaded. So make sure that you, uh, when you're looking at it this way, it's righty loosey, not lefty loosey. Right, and here are the old parts that I just pulled off, the oil separator, the oil drip pan, and the um, breather hose. Uh, I'm going to be saving this one, going to be moving this to the new hose. Um, these bolts, these four hold the oil separator in. They're an E10. Um, and here's the one that I was talking about that's reverse threaded. So this is an E8. And so to loosen it, you actually turn it to the right. I guess while we're here, we should probably talk about why you want to do this. Uh, this is the oil drip pan. Um, this will separate the oil vapor oil from the oil vapor that's built up in the pressure of your crankcase. Um, why that's important is that this seals up against a o-ring here. <clears throat> so when the oil is separated from the vapor, the rest of the air is funneled into the intake manifold. But what happens over time is that this doesn't spin perfectly concentric to this seal. So eventually it'll start to wobble and that wobbling will cause this seal to uh, gouge open and no longer seal. So what that means is that instead of just air getting into your intake, intake manifold through your throttle body, you're actually in introducing all the oil um, in that vapor going in there too. And because this wobbles, this this one's not too too bad, but um, this can sometimes wear a groove in it too. 
thus furthering that problem of getting oil in your intake manifold. And it's especially dangerous on this car because the intake manifold has swirl flaps that actuate and if it's caked in oil, it can't actuate, and then you break plastic things, and the plastic things get in your engine, and you're gonna have a bad time. All right, quick note on the fasteners for the oil separator. Um, I originally had these uh, e-torx bolts, and I prefer this one because you're able to get a e-torx wrench around them. Uh, some cars have less room behind the engine, between the firewall and the back of the engine than others. So being able to get an actual wrench on there, rather than having to do a male Torx bit, can save a lot of space. So I'm going to keep this one on mine. Uh, the one, the kit I got from FCP is this one, and it uses the Torx bit, like the bolt head is a female Torx. So I'm going to forego these, I'll probably keep these as spare, but I'm going to reinstall these ones for convenience. And while we're on this side of the engine, I forgot to take out the cam plug. So the one here on the passenger side head is one of the smaller ones. Just take your flathead screwdriver, kind of work your way around, pry it off. Oh, so this side's all done. Uh, oil drip pan is installed, oil separator is installed, new hose is installed, this vacuum hose is reattached, and everything's clamped down. So that's good. A uh, quick note about this hose. One of the easy ways to tell that if you're, if you're suspecting that your oil separator is going bad or the oil drip pan is going bad, um, the oil separator has, an, has a gasket all around the mounting face to the aluminum. Um, that'll start leaking and then you'll start smelling oil because it's dripping down onto the catalytic converters down there. Another way to tell if your oil drip pan is failing is that your uh, actual hose, if you just pop the hose off and look inside, if there's oil in it, then that's a good sign that it's failing. Mine is pretty good. Uh, that's shiny because of the dielectric grease, but I caught mine in time. A uh, nice preventative thing to do. FCP Euro has a lifetime warranty, so might as well do this on a regular basis. Okay, moving on to the driver's side of the engine, we're replacing this oil separator. There's a hose that goes into here and wires off to a vacuum. We're also replacing that hose. I remember that being a bitch, so I'm gonna see how much of this I need to take off. I see two bolts here holding the wiring harness, so there's one here and one here. We'll probably pop those off. This whole thing should be able to come up. Uh, there's a clip holding the hose in here. Not sure how that works, and this wiring might be in the way. Um, on top of that, we have the two uh, camshaft plugs here. One of the small ones down here and then the big one up here. So, we'll see how it goes.
All right, I got the driver's side PCV or oil separator, whatever it's called, off, and the hose running to the, the throttle body off. Uh, a couple notes about it. Um, I did end up taking out those two bolts, so one here, one here, and that gave me room to like lift this up here. Um, and then I popped the ECU off the top of the intake manifold. They just pop into these little rubber grommets here. And then two T30 bolts hold the bra this bracket to the intake manifold. Um, that's important because underneath here is a clip that holds the hose in. You don't have to disconnect these guys. Um, and then the hose just pulls off of that little hole right there. Uh, to get to that though, you do have to pull off your MAF sensor. So here's what it looks like. Um, so the way this works is that this plugs into there. There's a little clip back there you gotta pry, out, pry back with a flathead screwdriver. And then the annoying part is that these are, this one here and then the opposite side here are opposing clips. So you have to pry them away from each other to get them off of the hooks that are on the back of the intake manifold right there. So once you pop that off, that hose is easily accessible. So time to do it all, Oops. time to do it all in reverse. Got everything back together. Uh, new oil separator, hoses ran properly, all the bolts are back where they should be. Quick note about this job, <clears throat> a lot of this is plastic meeting with metal or like rubber meeting with plastic. It's a good idea to put dielectric grease on all the hoses or like all the male connections for the hoses like this or on your connectors like here. Uh, just makes, makes it a lot easier in the future. Um, these guys, all the mating surfaces I like uh, put a thin layer of oil on. Same with the O-rings for the oil separators. So just something to make the next time easier.
Cool. So we ran the car, let it idle, no check engine lights. And now we're just left the pile of parts to send back to FCP. So thank, thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you liked the video, let me know. Subscribe for more.